<laughs> All right. It's working now. I'm finally feeling alive. Praise God. Amen. Well, God is good. I appreciate each and every one of you. Praise God. Amen. We do have a lot of people out this morning. Amen. We do. Praise God. So we just need to keep them lifted up to the Lord in prayer. A lot of bugs and stuff going around. Praise God. I hadn't heard from Sister Tatum. Is she... Yeah, she was, okay. Praise God, <clears throat> amen. Well, keep these older ones lifted up to the Lord in prayer. Some of them we don't see because they just can't get out. So true love is one of those. My mother is another one. Uh, just, you know, these are part of us, amen. amen. And just keep them lifted to the Lord in prayer, amen. We need one another. Amen. We need one another. I need you, you need me, we need one another. Amen. That's how Jesus has this all put together. You know, he could do anything he wants to do without anybody's help. He really can. But he has chosen to involve us, you know, in what he's doing. He does do that. Amen. Amen. I mean, he uses preachers to preach to people to get them saved. Right? There's people that teach us Bible studies and gets people saved. There's people, Sunday school classes. He uses people. Those young people, God could do it without anybody, but he, he has chosen not to. He does it. And he teaches us. I really believe this. Did you ever wonder why God wants us to pray when he knows everything already? He does know. A lot of people come to the Lord and say, well, he knows what I need. You know, Well, I pray about it. He knows about it. Well, he does know about it. But he has chosen to, uh, <clears throat> you might say, somewhat regulate himself. He has chosen that. He's chosen to use prayer to work through. Because what it does, uh, it, it causes people to start caring about one another. Amen. When you start being burdened for somebody... That's an expression that you love that person or you care about that person. And that's what God is all into. So he has, though he doesn't have to have anything, he has chosen to use those things, amen, to cause people to bond together and care about one another. Praise God. <clears throat> Y'all are a quiet bunch this morning. Praise God. Well, let's look in the Word of God this morning <clears throat> to... Uh, I want to go to, did you see 1 Timothy 1 and verse number 5? Yes. Brother Damon, can we do that one first? I kind of get some things at, at the spare of the moment a lot of times. <clears throat> and so I don't have them in my original scriptures that I got together. I just zip them in there real quick. And, and uh, I was able to, I didn't, I had all my scriptures where they were all, kind of spaced out the way I wanted them. I was going to talk about them this morning. And I just zipped these in there, so bear with me. Praise God. I don't even have it on my own list, so I'm going to have to turn around and look so I don't misquote it. I don't want to misquote the Scriptures. Amen. Paul to Timothy. Amen. Timothy being a young preacher that was left uh, by Paul to help set things in order in the church and things. Praise God. And he instructs him. He says, now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Amen. I don't want to keep you standing a long time, so let's pray. Lord, would you touch us? Oh, God, by the word of the Lord today, let something be said. Oh, God, that's going to help us to walk and please you. I pray strengthen my brothers and sisters this morning. And let God each life be touched. God today. And I ask, Lord, I'm living before you for grace to minister your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. The end of the commandment. The end of the commandment is the goal of the commandment. Amen. Praise God. If you continue reading, uh, 
Paul was covering uh, those that he dealt with that were pushing the Mosaic Law and stuff. And so he had to deal with some of that. <clears throat> and th that happened a lot during the time of the apostles because the early church was all Jews at first. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, it was Jews that were gathered together, proselyte Jews too, but it was Jews, those that had been uh, in Judaism and stuff and under the Mosaic Law. And so when the true light then came, then shone, which was Jesus Christ, which fulfilled the law, amen, praise God, all the law and the prophets, uh, amen, came into what they were all uh, really and truly instituted about. Amen. The law was a school teacher to bring us to Christ. Amen. Jesus was the ultimate goal. And so there's the goal. Amen. And so Paul has to instruct these Christians that have been under the Mosaic law. Amen. Amen. And he, he explains to them, it's, basically it's not just a matter of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are great. And they are a reflection of what Christ is about. Amen. Praise God. They really are. They are a, a, a moral conduct. Amen. Praise God. All the law is fulfilled in one word that thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. Right? Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. So we have uh, here in Timothy, Paul to Timothy, he's telling the, the end of the commandment or the goal of the commandment. You know, a lot of people like to uh, pay attention to football and stuff. I ain't into all that. But they have a goal at the end. And they're trying to reach that goal so they can have points. Amen. They're not trying to stay right where they are because they don't ever get no points by staying right where they are, right? Yeah. Amen. They fight and struggle and, and all kinds of things to get to the goal post. The goal post. Amen. And, and that's what Christians... Christians should be striving for something. We have something to strive for in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's not just a matter of the Ten Commandments. We got a goal that we're striving for. Okay? We're reaching for the goal. Amen. There's something laid before us. There's uh, the way that Jesus has, uh, has laid out before us and, and brought us into. Amen. When you became a Christian, you have a goal to reach. Amen. Don't stay right where you're at. Right? Come on. You, like as in a football game, you don't get no points until you you're, you got to reach to strive to get to the goal. Amen. And that's what each Christian is, should be reaching for. That's what Paul is telling Timothy here. Amen. Praise God. He's saying the, the end or the goal of the commandment, what we're involved in, with Christ Jesus. The goal of it is charity. Charity is love, right? Amen. Charity is love. Charity out of a pure heart. Amen. Praise God. Not nothing phony or anything like that. Out of a pure heart. A heart that's been cleansed. Amen. Come on. Praise God. That's what the Word of God does to us. Out of a pure heart and of a good conscience. Amen. Praise God. We're living by the Word of God and our conscience is not defiled. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Amen. We got things right with the Lord. We, we got in this by getting our conscience clean. To, again, I mentioned this the other day, but Peter said, baptism does also now save us, not the uh, putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. In other words, you're not just taking a bath when you get baptized. You're not just cleaning your flesh. Amen. What you're actually doing is by, because Jesus died for you and he paid the price, he tasted the death that belonged to you and I. Amen? We had punishment going towards us. But Jesus took that punishment, right? And we've been baptized in his name because uh, he is our Savior. Amen? And when we came up out of that water being baptized in the name of Jesus, amen, our past sins were all washed away and now our conscience is clear. Right? we got a good conscience. So baptism does that, but we also, after being baptized, we get up and we walk and live for the Lord, right? And we don't violate 
the things of the Word of God. We walk in the teachings of Christ, right? And so we live without our conscience being defiled. If we do something, we shouldn't, but if we do, and we've all had to do this, I'm sure, we've blown it, made it a mistake, sinned some way or another. Hi, Sister Lance. Praise God. Amen. We just had prayer for Freddie. Praise God. But if, you know, if some way or another you do something <clears throat> that, that you violate something of the Spirit that you, when you're walking with God, you know, the Holy Ghost inside of you is going to convict you. If, you. if you're full of the Holy Ghost, it's going, to, it's going to trouble you inside. He doesn't do that because He's against you. He does that because he, sin keeps you from being productive with Him. And it grieves the Spirit of God. So the Lord deals with your heart and He brings you to repentance. And, you know, the blood that washed you at baptism, if you will repent, it, it keeps your conscience clear. Amen. It, it takes away the, the sin, the same blood. I'm glad. Amen. I've made some mistakes since I came to the Lord. Have you? I'm glad that the same blood that washed me at baptism keeps me clean as long as I don't willfully transgress and live in a sinful manner, right? It does. Praise God. The Bible says, I read this the other day, it says God is light and in is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us. That's when we're walking in the light. We just don't willfully live sinfully. And we find ourselves messing it up. It's not all over. Just repent and get it under the blood, right? Amen. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. We live with a good conscience. The end of the commandment, what we're, our goal is, the end of the commandment is charity of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Faith that's not fake. It's real faith. Walking in the faith. Amen. Praise God. So we have a goal. Amen. We need to strive to walk in the love of God. Amen. Praise God. Jesus said in John 13 and 35, this is very familiar to probably everybody in this place. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. In other words, men are going to tell that you are Christ's disciple. You're walking with Him and you're following Him because you have love one towards another. And people you know, can read that and if we need to understand the depth of that. Amen. Praise God. We need to understand that, you know, Jesus said that sinners love sinners. And if you love those that love you, what do you more than other men? Right? He did say sinners love sinners. People that are living sinfully, they love those that are loving sinfully. In fact, they would not have crucified Jesus if he hadn't been just like, you know, if he had been just like them. They crucified him because he was a light in a dark place, wasn't he? Amen. But he said, sinners love sinners. So when Jesus said that, does that mean that people can look at sinners loving sinners and they, and they believe that they're his, Jesus' disciples? No. See, Christians do something different than what the world does. Amen. There is a, a, a love that should be in the hearts of mothers towards their children. Amen. I love my grandbabies. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's people I loved before I ever knew Jesus. Amen. But that doesn't mean that I was filled with the Lord. Spirit, right? It definitely is something that God put into the heart of human beings. To love, there's a natural thing to love your offspring. Amen. Praise God. But there's a lot of people that don't know Jesus that love their offspring. That that does not mean that they're where they need to be with the Lord. The Lord is, God is love, the Bible says. And I'm kind of jumping the gun on some of these scriptures. But God is love, but He is that love that is produced inside of us when we have things right with Him. Amen. Praise God. He is that Holy Spirit of God. That Holy Spirit. That clean and Holy Spirit. And God wants us to love. Where Christians 
are, are known to be uh, His disciples. You see, we love even those that don't love us. That's the difference in the love of God and the love of the world. Amen. If brothers or sisters have difficulties with one another, have differences, and there are differences sometimes even in church. Amen. We don't give up on one another, and we don't throw in the towel on one another. Amen. Amen. We keep... I mean, you may not like everything everybody does in church, and, but you're, and you're not called to do that. Did you know that? You don't have to like everything that everybody does, but you do have to love one another. Amen. To be one of Jesus' disciples. See, when there's, there's anything that's differences in the church, amen, and, and, and you keep loving one another, the, pe the world looks at you and says, you're different than everybody else, Amen. Amen. Because you keep loving even whenever it's difficult. Amen. I said even when it's difficult. Praise God. Not that you always agree, but you always love one another. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at John chapter 3 verse 14 through 17. Praise God. Amen. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus is saying that, isn't he? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Praise God. As Moses lifted up the serpent, the people in the wilderness, after coming out of Egypt by Moses, they began to grumble and complain. Can you give me Deuteronomy? The one that was it? Numbers. Numbers. Praise God. Numbers 21, verses 7 through 9. This is what Jesus is referencing here. Praise God. He says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. They see, they have complained and grumbled about Moses, and, and you know, they forgot what they had come out of and started, you know, being unthankful for what was happening. In them, they were on their way to the promised land, and, and uh, they began to grumble and complain at Moses. Well, the Lord wasn't pleased with that. Yeah. And so they, he allowed serpents to come and bite them. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee, praying to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Praise God. Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee... This is, the, this is the remedy that the Lord had for them. Here they are. They've repented, right? And so the Lord tells them, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. Now Jesus used this as a reference, amen, to himself, right? Amen. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Praise God. So uh, Moses made the serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Amen. Now the Lord gave this for an example for generations to come. Is that right? Come on. This really had a, a message behind it about Jesus. Amen. Praise God. There was going to be something down and down the line that was going to take place, that God was going to look, let people look back and, and understand something about Him when He came. Amen? Now, these people made a mistake in taking this serpent, and they began to, they kept it because miraculous things were happening whenever this took place. The serpents had come and bitten the people, and the people were dying, and the Lord gave them this serpent of brass to be lifted up so they could look at it. And if anybody that was bitten looked at it, they, were, they, would, they would be healed. But you got to remember, they had repented, hadn't they? They'd come to Moses and, and the Lord told them, make a serpent, a serpent of brass. Well, people, like so often today, they made the mistake of worshiping that thing. Yes. Amen. It was a temporary thing that was to be observed. Do you ever go to the doctor's offices and see a serpent on a pole? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably where it reflects back to. 
Amen. Because there was healing there, you know. And so people want to take that, that sign and put it out on their doctor's office and things like that, representing, no doubt, probably the scripture. But listen, to what, look what people do. People do this even today about many things. Praise God. What did they do? Let's look at it here. <clears throat> and Hez, this is Hezekiah when he became the king. Amen. He removed the high places. See, people got, got to worshiping all kinds of idols. And worshiping idols and worshiping God wrong or worshiping other gods was not acceptable with the Lord. The Lord was not pleased with that at all. And he's not pleased with it today neither. Amen. He wants people to worship him in spirit and in truth, right? Come on. He seeks such to worship him. But these people made the mistake. Uh, and Hezekiah becoming king, he started removing all these idolatrous places and breaking the images and cut down the groves and breaking pieces. What did he break in pieces? He broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nahastan, which means a piece of brass. Moses said, that's just a piece of brass. You ain't supposed to be praying to that thing. They could look back and say, oh, well, it worked at one time. You know, people, you know, that's what people do with crosses today. They wear crosses around there as if that cross is some kind of a magical thing. A crucifix hanging from their windshield. I mean, from their rear view mirror, thinking that that's something magical. Jesus did not go to the Calvary so that we start worshiping crosses. Amen. What he did on the cross is what's important. Amen. Amen. Not pick up objects and make objects or figurines of Bible characters like Peter or Mary. Oh, a lot of people are gung-ho with Mary. They got her in, her, in their yards and everything thinking those statues of Mary is going to keep the booger man away. Amen. Or bring a blessing or something. You know what? That's taking something that was good in Bible days and making an idol out of it. So Hezekiah, knowing God wasn't pleased with all those things, he took that brazen serpent, that Moses, that sacred cow, you know, that thing that Moses had made it, the great mighty man of God, Moses made it. But again, it wasn't meant to be something that was left, amen, to be worshipped, amen. It was for a future purpose that Jesus, the Messiah, when he came into the world, he could look back and reference that, and related unto what he was doing. Amen? Amen? Oh, praise God. Listen to me. Whenever they sinned and the serpents, God sent the serpents out to bite them. Amen? You can say what you will, but I look at that and I think, you know, the thing that bit them also brought them life. And you know what? You had not known sin except the commandment said, you know, thou shalt not. We all became guilty by the word of God. The word of God was good. There was nothing wrong with the word of God. But because the commandment came. The Bible says I was alive at one time. Before the commandment came. But when the commandment came. Sin revived and I died. And the commandment that was ordained unto life. I found him to be unto death. Amen. I became a sinner. Amen. If there's a, not a speed sign out there. That says you can't. You have to go 60. You know if there's not a sign out there that gives you a law, you know, that you have to stay within that bounds, you're not violating the law if you exceed it, right? But when a speed sign is there and you go past it or faster than it, you become a transgressor of that speed limit. And when the commandment came, we became guilty. In fact, the Bible says the whole world became guilty before God. Whether you're a Jew or whether you're a Gentile, the whole world, amen, is in need of a Savior. Amen? amen. Praise God. And Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the serpent is the thing that bit them. Though Jesus was not evil, Jesus being the Word made flesh. Come on. Oh, come on. He is the Word made flesh. Amen. He became the thing that saved them. Amen. And it was when He was lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever uh, believeth in Him, praise God, should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
And he's not talking about just gazing upon Jesus, but it is through the cross that we find salvation. Amen? Amen. Everybody, any and all people, amen, need to look to Jesus, what he has done for them on the cross. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus? If it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, I would be forever lost. Amen? I couldn't turn over enough good leaves to become saved. I could never get rid of my past sins. Amen. The only way to get rid of past sins is not just being by a good boy or a good girl or start just doing good deeds, though we need to do good deeds. But the, the only way to get rid of the penalty of sin is for Jesus to bear that penalty. Amen. You got to understand, your sins did not go without punishment. You understand that? Your sins, my sins, did not go without punishment. The Lord just chose to take that punishment instead of it being upon us. Because you know what? If I had died in my sins and gone to meet my reward, this guy right here would have been forever lost. I would never be able to get out of that place of, of judgment. Amen. I would be forever cut off from God. I would be... Feeling those same things as Jesus felt on the cross. Amen. A lot of people think that Jesus was forsaken of God on the cross when he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know what Jesus was actually doing? He was experiencing what every soul that leaves earth without the blood of Jesus experiences. That's what Jesus was experiencing. That, that awesome, that awful, awful a feeling of being lost forever. That's what Jesus was experiencing. And that's why he cried out. Amen. The Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What the punishment that was supposed to go to me was laid on Jesus. Amen. Amen. It was laid on Jesus. Amen. Some may wonder why Jesus went to hell. Why did you go to hell? Why didn't you just die and just raise up? Because you know what? He was fulfilling all of the role that I was supposed to feel, fulfill. He went to hell. He did go to hell because I was supposed to go to hell. Amen. He didn't escape any of the punishment that belonged to me. He bare it all. Amen? Praise God. And whenever he went to hell, he took the keys of death and hell. Amen? Praise God. So I don't have to go there ever. You don't have to go there ever. Amen. But you will go there without the Savior. Amen. And in that he took my sins and he punished my sins in his body on the tree. Amen. He extended unto me and he extended unto you. Listen to me. Something I did not have and that was righteousness. Just like I put this coat on. Amen. This morning. Jesus rode me. Amen. When I took his name in water baptism, listen to me. I got something that I didn't have myself. I got righteousness. Amen. It's not mine. It's, he's robed me with that. And he's robed you with that when you was baptized in Jesus' name. I ain't got nothing to brag about except for the cross of Christ. Oh, praise God. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus, what he has done? He's given you something that you did not have and could never attain unto. Amen. Amen. Never, never. Amen. Could never attain unto. Could never reach. I remember Brother Busby. I love Brother Busby. Amen. I remember him saying something that I just stuck with me. And I've said it over the years, you know. What Jesus does to us is much like uh, a person that has, you know, borrowed a, a clean and white shirt without any, a brand new clean and white shirt. Amen. Without even a spot. So very white. Amen. Praise God. You know, if I, if I, if I, if <laughs> I. Praise God. If I, if I had a clean and white shirt and I told Brother Dwayne, Brother Dwayne was needing one to wear for church or something. And he said, can I borrow your white shirt? You don't have one, you know. And, uh, and, and, I, and I, that's, this thing was brand new, you know, real. I mean, just so clean and nice. And, and I said, oh, oh, Brother Dwayne, you know, 
I guess you can, but don't you get it dirty. This, I, you know, don't, don't, don't you get it dirty. But if he took that shirt, and on the way to church, he was wearing that shirt, and it was all so nice and pretty. And if he took, and his car broke down, and he said, oh, my, I'm going to have to get underneath the car. And, I, you know, and he gets underneath there, and he gets grease on it, and he gets it all soiled, and, 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 and all, you know, gets it all messed up. And, and, and he comes back to me, and he says, Brother Ratliff, I, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know that clean white shirt that you gave me? You know, that you told me, don't get it dirty. And he hands it back to me, and it's all soiled. It's all soiled. And you know what? Uh, and uh, if I, I could try to take it, and I could wash it and wash it and wash it, and never get it back. I might get a, a lot of it that's not shown so much, but just could never get the stains completely out. It would never be like it was originally. Have you ever had any shirts like that? I've got several of them. <laughs> Praise God. Just get some colors in there and mixed in. that No detergent on earth will get them out. Amen. That's kind of what happened to Adam in the garden. And Eve. Whenever the Lord had made them clean and white. Absolutely no sin. Amen. And whenever they sinned, they got their garments soiled. They got their garments soiled. And there was no detergent whatsoever found on earth that could bring it back to its state. Amen. But God provided a detergent, you might say. Amen. Praise God. Wouldn't it be something if God could provide a detergent that could bring those clothes all the way back to their original state? To their original cleanness. Amen? Amen? Praise God. That's exactly what Jesus did. Amen? Because there's no place on earth, no matter how much you wash it, you would keep coming up with stains. You would keep coming up less than what Adam and Eve was in the beginning. You would keep coming up. And though it may look clean, in the eyes of people there would be those blotches that would bleed through. And you'd always be there. But the blood of Jesus is as it were a detergent that not only you know forgives brother Dwayne could come in and say brother Ratley would you please forgive me for getting your shirt soiled and dirty and I just, it's just ruined you know you know what I could do I could forgive him but I would still have a soiled shirt wouldn't I but if I had a detergent and that's what the blood of Jesus is listen to me if I had a detergent that could bring it back to its original state. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I could not only forgive Brother Dwayne, but I could have that garment back in its original condition without even a stain there. And God can forgive your sins, but He's not into the just, just forgiving your sins. He's in the robing you with a clean garment that does not have a stain whatsoever on it. And that only happens, it does not happen by your own goodness. It happens by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So when He sees you, He does not see stained garments. Amen? He sees actually us brought back into a state of innocence. Amen. Oh, come on. We are washed. We are sanctified. That means we're made holy, not with blotches on us. We're washed, sanctified. We're justified. That means we're cleared of all guilt. That's what that, that's what that means. We're cleared of all guilt. Amen. Of past sins. And that's why Christians are told that they need to keep their garments without spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish. Amen? We don't want to go back to wallowing in the life of sin and get those garments that the Lord has robed us with tainted. Oh, praise God. If along your way something happens, amen, and you get something on it, that blood that washed it in the beginning is there to wash it again if we will just do what we're supposed to do and repent of our sins. Amen? He will wash it and He will keep it white as snow. Amen? Oh, praise God. Amen? Y'all are quite bunched this morning. Praise God. Amen? It only happens by the blood of Jesus that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Amen? But have 
eternal life. For God so loved the world, here's the one that we all know, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him uh, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. God wants the world to be saved. He wants you to be saved. He wants me to be saved. You've heard that before, haven't you? Amen. I want you to know something. Jesus has done something very tremendous for each and every one of us. Praise God. Clap your hands to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He loved us, didn't He? Come on. He loved us and He loves us. I said He loved us and He loves us. Amen. He does love us. He, he has great affection towards us. Amen. He wants us to make it. Amen. I, I'll toot Brian's horn. You know, my sister-in-law, Pauline, Sister Mary's daughter, came over the other day, about a week or so ago, and she brought over some clothes. I don't know. They looked like they were new. Amen. Praise God. She brought over a pretty good stack of them. And I said, she said, can you wear these? I said, no, I can't wear those. I'm a little chunkier than that, I guess, you know. Can you wear these? I said, I said no, I, I can't wear them. And she said, well, just take them and give them away. So I, I thought, I'll just bring them to the church to see if somebody at the church might need them. I put them in there. And I didn't know it that day before. Brian had prayed for some new clothes. Amen. Guess what? Those stack of clothes I brought them fit him. <laughs> and they're like new clothes. Amen. I said, God loves his people. John said it just a while ago. God, John said it just a while ago. The little things, amen, what we think are little things. He cares about. Amen. He's good. He's so kind. He loved us and he loves us. Amen. He cares about us. Amen. The Bible tells us to cast all our care upon him for he careth for you. Amen. He is developing us. He is changing us and transforming us. He wants us to be like Him. He wants us to follow in His footsteps, doesn't He? Praise God. Amen. John chapter 13 and verse number 34. A new commandment I give unto you. He tells His disciples this. And we're His disciples, are we not? Come on, we're His disciples. We're going to follow Jesus, right? Praise God. A new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another. Oh, here it is right here. Praise God. To what degree do we love one another? Not just like one another. Come on. He didn't say like one another. He said love one another. Amen. And again, you may not always like what others do, but you aren't commanded to like whatever everybody else is doing, but you are commanded to love one another. Amen. He said that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. He loved us when we were yet sinners, did He not? Come on. When we were not like Him, He cared enough about us to come and to give His life a ransom for all to be testified in due time, it says. Amen. He said that you also love one another. Amen. Praise God. Do you love your brothers? Amen. Do you love your sisters? Praise God. Do you love amen, the children of God? Young and old and care about them. This is what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. First John chapter 3, verse number 23. It tells us very clearly in the scriptures, and I kind of jumped the gun while ago in bringing these scriptures out, but I guess that's what's in my heart to preach to you this morning. Amen. That God wants us to love one another. You've got to remember the end of the commandment. The goal of the commandment, what we're supposed to be reaching for, is to love one another, right? Amen. Love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. This is the, His commandment, 1 John 3, 23, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. That's not an option, is it? And he that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him. You want to dwell in Him? And he in him. Amen. Praise God. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he has given. How do we know that, we abide, that he abides in us? How do we know? 
by the Spirit which He hath given unto us. Remember I told you the other day, Wednesday, and I'm kind of going over this right here because I want to get to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 because we have 1 Corinthians chapter 13 we're talking about the love of God. Amen. And I've been trying to get to the, the, the gifts of the Spirit in, in chapter 14. Amen. Praise God. Partially one reason why I'm covering this today as well. Praise God. But I told you in the Scriptures, I, I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you are speaking tongues. Amen? Praise God. But just those outward manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit, amen, is not necessarily how we tell that we are filled with the Spirit. Amen? Gifts operate. Yes, right? Oh, praise God. I say gifts will operate. Amen. When God gives us a gift, amen, He gives it to us to be a blessing to the church. Amen? amen. Praise God. But the way that we t tell that we are Christian, amen, is by the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. amen. It's not necessarily by speaking in tongues. If that was all it was, this would be, have not, no need of even being there. Praise God. The way that we know that He is abiding in us is by the Spirit which He has given unto us. Oh, praise God. Amen. Praise God. By the Spirit He has given. Let's look to 1 John 4, the next chapter, verses 7. Amen. I'm, I got several scriptures. He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen? Oh, praise God. Isn't that what brought Jesus to this world? Come on, it's, it's His love for us. Amen? In this is manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Here in His love, in other words, this is real love, right? Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins, the means by which to get the sin out of our lives, right? Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. Amen. Praise, if we love one another. You know how important this is? He's given us a spirit, right? Come on. This is the way that we know that He's in us. If we keep His commandments. By the spirit that He's placed with inside of us. Not because we spoke in tongues necessarily. Though that happens with believers. Amen. Praise God. But by the spirit that He has placed within us. How do we know that God is in us? Amen. How do we know that God is not in us? Amen. It's because if God is not in us, we won't be producing the fruit of God. But if God is in us, we will be producing the fruit of God. Amen? Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness. I've heard it before said. The, it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit. And that's singular. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And then attributes of love are... <laughs> Praise, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, temperance. Oh, praise God. Amen. He's put a spirit inside of us when we are filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, it's not a matter of being able to quote a bunch of scriptures. Amen. There's lots of people that can quote scriptures. There was a man back in Waco some years back, David Koresh. They said he could quote scriptures for a long time. Amen. Praise God. But he led people astray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He had multiple children by multiple wives. And he professed a lot about God. Amen. I want you to know something. That's not the spirit of the Lord though, folks. Amen. God is love. Amen. God is that spirit that was inside of Jesus. And that spirit was a sacrificial love. Amen. It was a love that suffered punishment himself for our welfare and our well-being. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. He didn't die for his sins. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. No man has seen God at any time because you can't see a spirit. 
Jesus was that one true God, came in a human form. But you still couldn't see the Spirit. By the way, God's Spirit is in this place. If the love of God is in this place, God is in this place. If the love of God is in your heart, God is inside of you. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise God. No, you can't see God. The way we know God is in us is if we love one another. Amen. Praise God. God dwells within us and His love is perfected in us. Hereby know we, uh, hereby know we that we dwell in Him and He in us because He, again He says it, He hath given us of His Spirit. Amen. That's how we know. Amen. He has given us of His Spirit. We have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him, and He in God. And we know, we have known and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love, and He that dwelleth, listen to me, oh praise God, you got a house you dwell in. Come on, it's not some place you just go occasionally. Huh? It's not some place. You live there. You abide there. And when we abide, listen to me, we don't just visit it now and again. But we're dwelling there. We're living in it. Amen? We're dwelling in the love of God. That's where the Lord Jesus wants to. You've got to understand, that's our goal. That's our goal. That's what we're reaching for. To dwell in the love of God. Jesus dwelt in the love of God. Even on the cross at the most horrible time. When people were lying about him. And saying all kinds of horrible things. Listen to me. What did he do on the cross? He prayed for them. He didn't shake his fist at them and threaten them. He prayed for them. Father forgive them for they know not what they do. You know some of us would have stood there and argued. Hey Lord they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Praise God. Jesus was the perfect example of a life that was controlled by the Spirit of God. He loved when he was hated. He never threatened. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. Because that wasn't his nature to revile again. His nature is love. That's who he is. He's forgiving. He's kind. He's good. Amen. Oh, I want Jesus in my life. I find myself often getting in the way. But I want that inside of me, don't you? I want that inside of me. I do tell you for sure, I have to die some in order to have that in my life. Because sometimes people aggravate me. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be his disciple. And he said, by this shall all men know you are my disciple. If you have love one toward another. Even in those difficult times. Amen. When you got a church, you got people full of different personalities. Do you know that? You got... And you got people at all kinds of levels. There's some of you just starting for the Lord. There's some of you been in it for years. And some of you that's been in it for years, nothing, nobody in particular, sometimes act like those that just started. <laughs> not, that's not a, nothing towards anybody in particular. I'm just seeing it over the years. You know, over the years. Praise God. Amen. Oh, but you got people in, in all kinds of personalities. And you know what? Just because some of us have different likes and dislikes, amen, that doesn't mean we don't both have the Holy Ghost. You know, you may like cream in your coffee, you know. I don't because it makes me fatter. <laughs> Praise God, you know. But I still love you. That's a, you know, crazy analogy. I'm just saying we, we have different, you know, things that we're fond of. Amen. Praise God. We don't stumble over those things. We love one another regardless. Amen. Praise God. We're like a family, aren't we? Come on. We are a family. Amen. Praise God. Your natural family. Did you ever fuss with your brothers and sisters? Huh? Praise God. But you never walked away from them and forsook them, did you? Come on. You make up and keep going, right? I hope you did. 
Praise God. I mean, I remember my sister getting so mad at me one time. Not Teresa. She probably did too, but... <laughs> my sister, one year older than me, her name was Jackie. She was all kind of... She was the bruiser of the family. She would handle you. You know, but I remember my, my grandmother had, had a, a towel rack, one of those old wire towel racks in her kitchen. And my sister grabbed me, and she was giving it to me against that towel rack, pushing me against that towel rack. You know I didn't deserve it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But you know what? I love my sister today. I, don't hate, I didn't hate her then. We had a moment of, you know, controversy. Hey, Amen. I remember one time when my, my sisters, you, oh, my goodness, those girls could fight like wildcats. You know, I had two older sisters, and they were pretty uh, close to the same age. Not real close. Teresa and Jackie. And I remember them getting tangled up. They, had, they shared the same room when we was growing up. And uh, I remember one time, my dear mama, oh my, she done had enough of it. Those girls were fighting. They were pulling hair. They were in their night clothes at that. And my mama just throwed them out the back door. And they were scrapping, biting each other. Some of them had bites in their legs where they were scrapping and, and, and biting one another and fighting with one another. But you know what? That passed and they got over it, and they love one another, and they're dearly close today. Amen? Praise God. They didn't forsake one another because they had some issues. Amen? Just the heat of the moment, and they joined back together. Amen? Amen. And if anybody else would have attacked them, they would have both been on top of them. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. You know why? Because they loved one another. Amen. They may have had some temporal disagreements, but they love one another. Amen. And I want you to know something. Praise God. Sometimes things happen. Amen. Even in church. Amen. Praise God. And God don't want us forsaken one another. Amen. Praise God. Deal with it. Get over it. Love one another. Be good to one another. Amen. Praise God. People of the world look at us and say, they got something we ain't got. Come on. They love one another. Yeah, they have their disagreements. Yeah, they have their differences. But they don't forsake one another. They're right back at it. Supporting one another. Strengthening one another. Because Jesus is in their life. Amen. 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 Jesus is in their life. Amen. Praise God. Even in homes, marriages. Amen. Praise God. My wife hasn't always thought like I thought. <laughs> Praise God, I heard somebody say, amen, they never had a fight in their marriage. I cannot say that. Amen. Now, we hadn't had not, you know, pouts and pans flying or anything like that. <laughs> Praise God. But I cannot say we've never had, you know, differences of opinions. And, and at times even heated, you know, I can say I haven't had it this week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. But we get along good. We get along good. I'll sick Mima on her if she gets too bad with it. I've been, I've been cooking Mima's breakfast. Getting on, I'm on her good side, I hope. <laughs> no. I got a good wife. We get along real good. We really do. But over the years, you know, things happen. They, they have happened over the years. And we've had our differences. But we're married. You know, we're committed to this. We're still there. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. Things happen. In fact, sometimes it's easier, amen, to have fusses with those you're closest to. It really is sometimes. Amen. Praise God. If sometimes we treated our families like sometimes we treat strangers, we'd have a pretty good home life. Right? We get common. We've got to watch that. We've got to watch that. You know, I always try to look at my... My, not only my wife, but also my children. There's been times I went to my children, you know, and had to ask their forgiveness. Because, you know what? I might have thought I was right at the time. But, there, you know, there's been times where I had to go to them. You know, you may think I don't have to do that. I think, yes, I do. If I'm going to have my children respect me. I got to say I'm wrong when I'm wrong. And I ask their forgiveness. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> but, you know, we, we've got to 
We've got to love one another. Amen. Praise God. Be good to one another. God wants us, other people to look at us and know. You know, not necessarily that we don't ever have differences, but that, you know, those differences don't separate us. Amen. We deal with them. We deal with them. Praise God. But I always looked at my, I, I, I forgot what I was saying a while ago. That happens quite often. But I always looked at my wife. Not only is she my wife, but she's also my sister in the Lord. Amen. And those little children that you know, her and I have had, I mean, they are not only my children, but they as well are my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. Amen. That's the way I look at them. And God will not let me do one of his children wrong. He does not want me treating anybody wrong. Right. Amen. Even though I'm their dad and though, you know, I have the authority over them. But God wants me to treat them as little Christians. Amen. That, because that's what they are. Yeah. That's what they are. They're not just my children. They're his children. Yeah. I said they're his children. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God wants us to love one another. I'm not saying excuse, you know, whenever children need to be punished or something like that. I don't believe in beating them, but I do believe they need correction. Raise up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they won't depart from it. But we know that He dwells in us and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. And He's talking about that love of God. That's what the Holy Ghost is. When a person prays through the baptism of the Holy Ghost... Listen to me. They do not instantly know every aspect about living for God, but one thing everybody gets when they get the Holy Ghost instantaneously, without even being taught it, they get the love of God. Amen? Because that's what has filled their lives. That's what has filled their lives. Amen. When you are full of the love of God, you want to forgive. I say you want to. It's there. It's part of that. It's that spirit that he puts within you. It makes you want to be benevolent, to help people, to be good, to be kind. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In fact, I'm not doing very good about getting there. Amen. But it talks about the love of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says this. I'm going to read out of the NIV. It's, I like the way it uh, brings this out. It says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Does that remind you of Jesus? It is not easily angry. Here's the one I like. It keeps no record of wrongs. Isn't that beautiful? That's like Jesus, isn't it? Come on, he's not remembering your past. And he says, if you remember others' past, he'll bring your past up. You don't believe it? I can go through the parable about the two people that owed things. That's what that is teaching. That is what that's teaching. Listen to me. If you're having trouble... Forgiven people uh, that have offended you in the past. Listen to me. You need to remember how much was forgiven you. And there's been a pile forgiven me. I don't want to harbor anything against anybody. Praise God. And the Lord taught me a long time ago. I've had people do me wrong. I have had people do me wrong. More than one time. Amen. The Lord taught me. Listen to me. He taught me through His Word. And He pressed me through His Spirit. When people do me wrong, listen to me. Praise God. Don't just go around... Sharing it with others, but start praying for them and asking God. This is sometimes very difficult. Amen. Because inside you're not wanting to do it. But listen to me. You go and you ask God. This is what he, he's instructed me to do. You ask God to forgive them. And this is the hard one. Don't even remember it, Lord. And my flesh is saying, you're being stupid. <laughs> You mean you don't want them to be punished for that? I'm going to, listen to me. That's hard sometimes because your flesh don't want to let go of things. My flesh doesn't. Maybe yours is better than me. You, may, you know? But God says, you know, pray, I, I started praying, Lord, don't even remember it. 
what they'd done to me. Oh, y'all are looking deep right now. Y'all are thinking deep. You know what? That's what Jesus has done for us, hasn't it? Come on. He doesn't even remember it. Old song says, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. From the book of life, they've all been blot out. I don't remember them anymore. Amen. Praise God. The Lord doesn't remember your past when you repented and been baptized. The only indication that He would ever bring it up is if you refuse to let go of things. I'm just telling you, that's the truth. If we refuse to forgive, amen, I don't want my past brought up. I do. I want it under the blood. Come on, I did some things I'm very ashamed of before I ever came to the Lord. I don't want that stuff come up. I want it under the blood, amen. And there's nobody that's ever done me as bad as what I did to the Lord. Y'all are probably better than me, but you know, I'm just telling you about this guy right here. I want to keep everything covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Praise God. It, it, amen. Love keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. King James says in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God, the goal that we're after is love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith that's not fake. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I didn't get no amens. I amen myself. <laughs> and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth, not just temporarily there, I'm talking about abiding there. He that dwelleth in love, remember what Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, that's talking about staying there. Not briefly there and out, in and out, in and out. A double-minded man is unstable in all his way. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We've got to get in this and abide in this and live in this. Amen. Oh, come on. We need to let that spirit that was in Jesus dwell inside of us, live inside of us at all times, even in the times of difficulty. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's jump down. Praise God. In verse number 19. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he whom hath... For he whom... For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen... How can he love God whom he has not seen? Because you can't see God. God is that Spirit, that Holy Spirit, that love. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Amen. Listen, if everybody was easy to love, that wouldn't be in there. You understand? There are situations... Even in church, where you might have difficulty. But that's why that is written. So that we love. We love God probably as much as we love the least. Don't, did you understand that? Praise God. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, I done cover some of it, but we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit on Wednesday night, have been. And he says, Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, I'm just making noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I can foretell things, right? And understand all mysteries. I could tell you about the mystery of godliness, the mystery of Babylon, and all of these mysteries. Amen. Though I understand all mysteries, Praise God. Praise God. And all knowledge. In other words, I know a lot. By the way, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Right? Amen. Amen. 
Praise God. Though I have all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, it lets me know that you can have these things. Right? It's possible to have these things. And though I have all these things and have not charity, I'm nothing. I can pray and things move, move those mountains. <laughs> but it doesn't amount to nothing. Amen. I'm nothing. And though I, be, I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, people can do that for the wrong reason. Did you know that? And though I give my body to be burned, I seen one time one guy, there was a picture of him in a magazine, I believe it was, and this guy was sitting cross-legged, and he had poured gas over himself for his cause, whatever that cause was, I don't remember now. And he was actually burning there, sitting there like a, you know, cross-legged and everything, burning. He was sacrificing money. But it don't do no good. It don't do no good. Don't get my body to be burned and have not charity. It profiteth me nothing. How important is love? How important is love? How important is this? Amen. Paul talks about the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I, I told you that's why I'm also teaching on this today. Because I want to get to the gift, to the tongue talking stuff in chapter 20, 14. I mean. But in chapter number 12, and by the way, in the Bible, you know, the original scriptures, there's no chapters and verses. So as they think, I'm glad there's chapters and verses. You know, I like it. It helps me find things. But <clears throat> chapter 12 starts off, and now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. You know, he talks about all the gifts of the Spirit and stuff. And, you know, and he gets in there and he says at the end of that chapter, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And he, in, in between, chapter 14 also has about the gifts of the Spirit. Come on. And this is exciting because those Corinthians were zealous of spiritual gifts, but Paul wanted to get something across to them. It doesn't matter how many spiritual gifts you got. If you don't have chapter 13, you're blowing it. All of the things, the gifts of the Spirit, and we want them, want them, want them. I want God to do mighty works because it blesses you. Amen. And it will bless others and help others. But though we have all of those things, if we don't have the love of God. Amen. It's got to be motivated by that. It's got to be motivated by that. That's got to be the motive. You know, your motives are very important. Jesus said even your motives in praying is very important that you do it not to be seen of men. Come on. Or you don't have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. When you fast, you know, don't let other people know. Fast in secret. Your Father which sees in secret shall reward you open because people can fast. They figure their faces and say, oh. <laughs> but you, know what's, you know what's the difference? The motive. The motive. And the reason we do what we do in the kingdom of God and in church. Amen. Everything that we do needs to be for one another. The gifts of the Spirit are given to profit with all. Everybody. Amen. I want you to be used. I want you to be used. Amen. And I want it to be motivated out of the right spirit. Amen. Out of that love of God. Amen. Oh, praise God. Charity never faileth. Verse number 8, chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. Charity never faileth. In other words, it's going to be forever. But whether there be prophecies... They shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. When are they going to cease? When Jesus takes these mortal bodies and makes them immortal. This corruptible body and makes it incorrupt. That's whenever he's talking about. The tongues are going to cease. The prophecies, there's not going to be no need of the gifts of the Spirit. Knowledge, it shall vanish away. Right now, while we're living in these corruptible bodies, we know in part. and We prophesy in part. In other words, we're human beings. We're mortals. That's what he's talking about in part. We're not changed to incorruptible yet. Amen. But when, but when that which is perfect, whenever our bodies are changed, this vile body puts on immortality, right? But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. In other words, we have the need of the gifts of the Spirit right now, right? Because we are in part. We're mortals. Amen. But when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away. Well, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. And, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, right now, while we're walking this earth in human bodies, for now we see through a glass darkly. 
but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also am I, I, I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Well, you know why the greatest of these is charity right now? Because it's going to last forever. It's going to last forever. When we're changed, this mortal puts on immortality, we won't need the gifts of the Spirit. We won't need prophesying. We won't need the gift of spirit to step in and operate for a need. We won't need the gift of knowledge or the gift of faith, all of those kind of things, because we will be in his presence. Amen. <laughs> you make it out of here onto the other side, you got it made. Praise God. Amen. But right now we need all these gifts. But the greatest of all the gifts, I mean, of all the things, we have hope. Amen. Of that which is coming. We're saved by hope. Amen. We have faith, hope, and charity. Praise God. We operate the gifts of spirit by faith. And uh, we live by faith. And all of that. Amen. Praise God. But none of those things are going to be necessary when we get on the other side. But one thing that's going with us to the other side. And that will be magnified on the other side. Is the love of God. Amen. And that spirit's got to be in us. I said that spirit's got to be in us. The love for God and the love for one another. Amen. And we can't love God without loving one another. Praise God. I can say I do, but the truth of the matter is the Bible says I'm lying. Amen. I'm glad God's not partial, aren't you? I mean, He loves people. He loves... He loves us... Amen. Even when we're not everything we should be. He does. He wants us to make it. He cares about us. He wants us to have that same care inside of each and every one of us. Peter said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Seven times? He thought he was doing good, didn't he? Seven times. You know, before he got around Jesus, he probably thought, I ain't going to forgive him. He, in fact, he was the kind of guy, he'd take care of business. I believe he was. Sounds to me like he was, you know. He was the one to grab the sword. <laughs> Whop! <laughs> Cut his ear off. He was used to being like that. And he asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times. And Jesus said, I didn't say it seven times, but 70 times seven. What he was basically saying, without end. Without end. He, he said, in a day. <laughs> you'd think he was faking it wouldn't you come on <laughs> you're not meaning it when you're saying it but how many times seriously does God forgive us how many times have you ever had one of those days where you just felt like you just kept blowing it I have I'd raise all three hands if I had three I have and I've noticed sometimes that sometimes it's when I've been trying to pray and fast the most even when I'm trying, you can say what you will, but have you ever had those days? Well, I just, there's days when I'm walking with the Lord, and bef I'm not even talking to him. All of a sudden, poof, his presence just drops in on you. Isn't that wonderful? Woo, praise God. I've, sometimes when I feel so unworthy to do that, I think he's interested in picking his kids up, don't you? When he does those things to us. Isn't that wonderful? You love those times, don't you? But you know what? Sometimes. I feel like I dropped the ball. And sometimes I feel like, listen to me, that, you know, I am so undeserving. I'm so undeserving. And, and I feel like I just keep, I ain't when I got drunk or shot up any dope or anything like that. But sometimes my attitude stinks. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you know, sometimes I have trouble with me. Do you ever do that? Oh, <laughs> y'all are perfect. Y'all need to be one up here preaching, don't you? But I'm just telling you, sometimes I feel like I'm not hitting on all cylinders, and I feel like, oh, God, you know, surely you must think I don't mean it when I ask forgiveness. But you know what? He does know that I mean forgiveness. I really mean it, you know. Whenever I'm not everything that I need to be, I'm trying, and my best seems short. Am, am I the only one that does it? Huh? I need my wife sometimes to be real long-suffering with me during those times. <laughs> she may be the spiritual one. Sometimes that happens in the house, you know. 
One of us will be spiritual, you know, and one of us will be sputtering, you know. It's important for the spiritual one to stay spiritual during that time so you don't have a big bonfire, you know. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But sometimes, listen to me, the Lord, I feel like, again, I'm not talking about going out and, you know, cheating on my wife or anything like that. I'm just saying just, you know, Christian attitude. I'm just not prevailing in it sometimes. Like I need to, I need to go pray. And sometimes I went and prayed. And I'm still, sometimes we have those seasons we go through. You have seasons. That's why Paul said to Timothy, be instant in season, out of season. Keep on keeping on. Keep on. Come on, God's able to forgive. God is a forgiving God. And he's a merciful God. And he's a kind God. And you know what? He wants you to make it. He wants you to make it. He wants you to make it. Amen. He's good. Stand with me. I won't keep you. Praise God. Praise God. He wants us to make it. I want you to make it. Don't you want everybody to make it? I do. Praise God. Amen. I'm not going to keep you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving us this time together to study your word. Oh, help us, Lord, not just to be hearers, God, but actually, God, put the word of the Lord inside of our hearts. Receive it. God, and help us to be those Christians, God. Help us, Lord, oh God, to attain unto the goal, great God, that you've called us to. God, that we spoke of in our earlier scripture, God. Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone that's here. God, would you give them, God, a blessed life. And may their spiritual walk with you especially be strengthened. May they be close to you, Lord. May they walk with you, have peace and harmony in their lives and amongst us all. God, I pray, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say, in Jesus' name.